Rob, welcome back. It's been a minute since you've been here. There's been many minutes. Many, many minutes. minutes. I've been here. <laughs> We've been busy, right? I've been to like two, three events. You've been to a bunch of events. You went to Nova. You've been doing some local stuff. Yeah, went. Uh, we finished Nova in uh, end of August. The last like uh, local stuff was in uh, June prior to that, and we have some local stuff coming up in October. Nice. And then just tons of tons of online TTS stuff. That's super cool. I always like to see events happening, so it's good stuff. But yeah, let's just play events. That's it. But today we're talking about a couple of events that I went to. I went to Tabletop Scotland. I went to Warhammer World. Uh, I know you like to see uh, lists and talk about lists, so you're back. That's why we're here today. I just want to discuss some lists and why I may or may not like them, but I'll give the appropriate <laughs> flowers to people do. So just for your information for people at home, if you guys want to see the vlog that we put together of these events, links up there, links down there, you'll be able to see that. Really cool, really fun. Check it out. But so these events, now the reason why, well, what I've done is I've kind of lumped them together into Frankenstein's events is because we were running uh, four missions each event. In both events, we were playing Race to the Ground, Brutal Encounter, and Lightning Rage. And then it's only Endless Struggle that we played in Warhammer World and Reclaim Our Relics at Tabletop Scotland. So the events are basically close enough to each other in terms of what we played, how we played it, that I think you can get some decent metrics and just lump them together and then do something that way. I may be wrong. Statistics aren't my strong point. There we go. <laughs> Participants. So this is across both events, right? Slaves to Darkness had real good participation this time around. Similar Cities, in Sig Cities of Sigma, that wasn't bad. STD, lots of Vexmoor, lots of Arangard. Rob, you're probably not even <laughs> surprised that <laughs> that's a thing. No, 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 not at all. Uh, it's that's that's writing on the wall that we've been seeing cover because most people that were playing Chaos and have played the game prior typically had a Varen Guard in their collection, one or two. People had some old Marauders or Chaos Warriors. There's just a whole grab bag of mix of excellent looking models and very effective models at the same time. For sure. It, it's one of the best war bands in the game at the moment. Just like Chaos good stuff, probably. I think they're one of the best because you could slot in two specific allies that we all know and beloved. I don't know if you ever heard of this dude called Vexmore. He's cool. <laughs> and then uh, Varengards, right? So you have either of these. And then if you still want to play your Fomeroid Crusher or your Myrmidon, you absolutely can. So there's like no shortage of excellent things that you can build around and just kind of mm -hmm. litter to your liking that will have a great reaction and do very well with whatever you choose that's very popular and easy to build around with a lot less traps than yeah. other fractions and marauders are some of the best left remaining chaff right since sort of like grave Wars got hit since shatterers got hit all of that kind of stuff it's only really marauders that are sitting in that toughness for 10 wound 65 ish point range i think yeah, it's the three inch range and the reaction, right? So they just sit there and go, hey, are you going to swing at me? Put me down to six, swing again. Oh, going back up to nine. <laughs> it's so hard to kill them unless you're like a two X or three X profile. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning for those who are new listening, if you have two or three damage as your primary hit and whatever your crit may be, may be. That's the best way to take care of them. If you were one four one, you know, anything that's like that, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to effectively kill them. So mm. then at 60 points, their value just skyrockets. It doesn't matter if you're hitting them on threes, they're healing back up twice effectively, sure. removing your activations while still having some big fighters behind them to go. So yeah, I think that's why we saw a lot of chaos. If we look at the tournament points, you need 16 points for three and one. We were playing our favorite, five points for a win, three points for a draw, one point for a loss. You can see who did well, right? Courage and Overlords have not done badly ever since. People ask, are Cleo dead? The answer is no, right, they can still right. do real well. Nighthaunt, <laughs> I've been doing real things. I probably talked about them to death. We'll, we'll check out my list, see what that was about. I know there's one real interesting outlier here that you probably want to... Talk about asking again, True Blades. It went three and one at Warhammer World. I have to look at and see the path to victory on that one because <laughs> it is an outlier. So I got to see what they played against on what mission yeah, they yeah, play yeah. Yeah. and what were the kill points. To be honest and fair with everybody, I am rooting actively for all these old beast folks. I am not 
somebody who dislikes Bespokes, that True Blades box does not sing as a one box <laughs> compared to Wilder Core and and like all that stuff. Like they're not they're not breaking any any molds, but they're in one stick. I love seeing people take something, whether it's getting a little bit lucky or just doing yeah. out right well. That's awesome. Iron Golems, surprisingly, like Iron Golems are one of my boys, right? I think they should be really, really good in this format. I don't know what happened here with the Iron Golem player. Possibly they were new, maybe they've never played the missions before. But I don't think this is indicative of what we should see um, from Iron Golems. The rest of it, yeah, the decent stats going all round. So this is the final standards of Tabletop Scotland, dominated by Death, top two. My haunts, sort of like Raven Haunts. Ogres, I expected to do real good because. Like, ogres are very good in this format, if you ask me. Monster killers, I expect them to do good as well. This is Warhammer World. You can see Slaves of Darkness, KO. Wonderful punters up there. Charles Diddick, he came third this time around, which was real good. More Slaves of Darkness. Me there in fifth with Nighthaunt. This is Frankenstein's event. The final standings across both events. I've mashed the tournament points together, so we get one big super event. You can see it, right? Yanish came first with Slaves of Darkness. Then Mark... What would this be? This would be like sixth or something with slaves. And then a couple in the middle. You don't really see a lot of slaves at the bottom. There's like one down here, but that, that kind of happens. But yeah, I think overall there's a pretty good mix of warbands. But again, we do see a lot of slaves and we know why. I've noticed 58% of you guys are not subscribed. So here's my call for you. If you like what you see and you want to see more videos, Please don't forget to subscribe. It costs you nothing and it helps me out a ton by helping me get noticed more on YouTube and helping me get my videos out to more people. If you want to give me some more support, you can join me on YouTube as a member. You can join me over on Patreon and you can join me over on Streamlabs. Either way, you're going to get to see behind the scenes content, see stuff before it even comes out on YouTube and you're going to have a little bit of a say into the kind of content I'm creating going forward. But what everybody is here for, top three. Okay. So this is our Frankenstein's events, all the events mashed together, how people came. So, first place, Yanish, Tharagard, Vexmoor, Ephelim, Fornmore, <laughs> Apatrax, a warrior, and a marauder. We've seen builds like this do really well in the past. Demetrios has been doing really well with this kind of thing. He's now retired Ephelim. Uh, but I think this kind of takes that build with Ephelim and the teleporting, adds in all the power that you get from Tharagard, Vexmoor, and dials that up quite a bit. Yeah, so if we're looking at Frankenstein's event, yes. if we're looking at this top three conglomeration yeah. of a bunch of stuff put together to can get more details more and data, data out of it, the one thing we're going to have to do is ignore the missions at hand until we break them down individually, right? So sure. if you're looking, or, or anybody joining us and looking at this, we're looking at this in a list, in a vacuum almost, mm. and why and how does this work and how does it, function which is fine for the most part it's fg2 and then sprinkle in one other one so we understand what that's going to be about that's something important we have to note for anybody else joining us mm -hmm. and then looking at this the ephilim vexmore spawn maw apatrax chaos warrior chaos marauder <laughs> it is the biggest like soup within itself it's a meta soup it's pretty cool i met mad respect for being able to just be like all right we got undivided we got slanish we got zinch in here and then we're just gonna sprinkle everything yeah. there's a lot of cool combos yanish finishing first off something that has so many abilities mm. shows that they weren't just lucky it also shows that this person knew how to play knew where the blessings go and knew how to maneuver themselves there you have to worry about vex more but then you have to worry about these huge 12 plus 3 inch teleporting swaps and then a 10 inch running Varen guard. So there's the rep projection in the most unusual ways all over the place. And it's really cool. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, my only loss for first place actually of Warhammer World was to Yanish. Stressful game. <laughs> <laughs> because you can move with Nighthawn, right? You can yeah. fly, and to most factions, that's a death sentence because they can't keep up. You could strike and surgically remove, but when you get there and all of a sudden they're like, whoop, swap, whoop, pull yeah, you, exactly. run you down. I'm stronger than you. I'm fa just as fast, if not faster with certain pieces. It's got to be a nightmare for you. Yeah, <laughs> I cannot imagine no, that. no soft targets, which is... <laughs> you got to focus down like the spawn maw 
in Apatrax, and then if you don't kill the Marauder yeah. first, he's just gonna heal up. So. I, I only killed Spore more Apatrax Marauder. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're the only soft targets. I, 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 it's pro- it was probably hell of a game, though. It was probably a lot of fun. Oh, it was stressful. Very stressful. Um, George, George came second at Warhammer World. So he's yeah. the other four and oh with the Corrupted Overlord list. Real interesting that Fusil Major on Warhawk in there oh. as an anchor i think it's really really i think it's expensive of course it's expensive by itself but as an anchor i think it's real good anchor anvil uh either one same piece big big heavy i'm gonna sit there he could buff his own toughness if he wants he could sit there in the middle of a point and just shoot none of its buffs apply to anybody else so he's taking it as a 245 piece this is my point if you want to fight me it's 35 wounds on s6 i'm clanking back i'm shooting back you can't net me I can buff myself to be 8T if I want. That's kind of sick. I love that. I think mm-hmm. that's a super... It's also like a crazy fun model too. Like, sure. That's the real reason you play it because it looks sick and it sees over all the trees so you have line of sight on everybody forever. I think it's super smart, right? If you're going into an event and you know there are going to be Varangons there and Varangons are like strength 6, uh, tough to throw, say. Like, throw, 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 it. Throw, it. throw it. Wound me on 5. So it doesn't matter. What, they got 35 wounds? Something like that? <laughs> they have 35 <laughs> wounds, right? It's crazy dude like varen guards become so much less scary when your team is t6 or t5 because when they're hitting on fours or fives they're just not as threatening the aether chemist i love the aether chemist took a big big old hit right with the fight for profit nerfs but it's still by itself pushing out six attacks so it's it's just going to do damage which is right admiral similar reasons right it's real efficient in terms of the points you're paying they got a bit of everything they got emrick iron hail in there who i'm not super familiar with emrick um, iron hail is an old volley gun so he's six three six yeah six attacks three strength one three one, yeah three. three wow that's not bad 120 points so he's kind yeah, of i have i'm going to go on a tier for a second because it's one of the most frustrating models that people have used in tts to ally in with his leader so yeah. then you have something like dispossessed and then somebody brings in enric iron hail and sure. all of a sudden it's i die get a free extra shot all of a sudden this thing's throwing 12 18 24 dice in a turn yeah. and it's just yeah. you're, you're gonna get some sixes in there and it's so <laughs> and he's he's 12 wounds or 16, 15 wounds, 14 well, wounds, 14 wounds, 14 wounds. Right, right, right. I gave everybody every answer. Well, possible. Wounds. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 14 wounds on T4. Uh, he, he's T3, 14 T3. wounds, but he's got okay. 15 inch range, which is huge yeah, yeah, yeah. with the six shots. Huge right? range, 14 wounds. So he's not dying immediately, even if you do engage him. And he's sitting there mowing everything down. That's wild. So he gives like this list is pretty neat. Uh, although it's eight, which I give a lot of respect for because old, KOS for like 9, 10, 11, 12 models. Yeah. Having eight and just being like, I got a big boy and I got some shooty boys. Let's go. It's kind of sick. Iron Hail. Iron Hail is really good. If I suspect anybody gets touched out of this list, it's going to be Iron Hail. <laughs> right. That's kind of awesome. And then me, I came in third, been doing Nighthorn stuff. Nighthorn good. That's all I can really say about that. I am 10 wins, one draw, one loss competitively out of the three events I've been to with Nighthorn so far. New Nighthawk. Yeah, we, uh, you and I have talked about them, right? Like, yeah. we're both fans of the models. We're both yeah. fans of the play yeah. style. I um, think they're really cool. Interesting pick here was the Cruel Glass Cruciator over Wither the Blade. They do different things. I really like having this bulky 25 wound thing that you can just sit behind something, pump shots into things, and have it be your resurrect anchor as opposed to the Wither the Blade that has to, like, get in there and fight and usually die. So they do different things, but I'm, I'm really liking the Krogast. I, I think there's definitely a, p- a place for it. Plus one strength gives it strength five as well. So it's going to be winning on threes most of the time. Four shots, one four damage. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's another, can I throw just a bunch of dice? You're eventually going to throw some sixes. It's that's going it. to pop some stuff. That's, that's Chip it, it down, right? right? And then your Hellwraith and your Spooky Horse go right in and clean it up. Yeah, that's it. I like it. I've talked about it before, but Nighthorn are really doing well now. And I'm really happy with them. I'm happy they're also not overwhelmingly strong right it's like the perfect range yeah. of power they have yes. some really good matchups they have some good missions yeah. but they're not to the point where if you line up across the board with somebody like oh man yeah. i'm gonna just yeah. get dumpster nah like a varen guard's terrifying for you yes, they have right all like counters which is <laughs> you're not winning fights against vex war it's not happening no. like there's there's a lot of things there that like you have bad matchups into, but there's a lot of stuff that, that people are just not prepared for. You're like, oh, wow, I'm not prepared for that speed, the flying. I can't get to you. It's an issue. I love where they're at. I think that's the 
perfect level of balance where things should be. Yeah, 100%. Congratulations on running them. I know Thank you've been you. wanting to do them for a while. I have, yeah, yeah. I'm super happy. Right, next up. So this is still three and ones. Fourth place in Freckless Science event. We got Charles. He took, we remember this list. Like I took this list a while back to one of the Warhammer World events. It's fairly straightforward. Calthea, Warden with Dog, Arbalest Star, Pair of Trail Hounds, Troublaze of Crossbows. It's, it's solid. It has problems with some matchups. But otherwise, I think in terms of what got punters, it's as balanced as you probably want to make it. This is one of your original lists, right? My team has been playing with alternate lists that they came up with as well with Wildercore. And Wildercore is a great base hmm. that can take advantage of a lot of things from Arbalester to spamming twin crossbows. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about your events right now. I'm happy to see a Calthea at this point because <laughs> everything else is so much worse. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like Gosh, I've said for a long time that Calthea is basically an enabler that allows a warband to do what it wants to do, just like more, if you get me. She's a force multiplier, right? She is, like, 100%. She, action economy on a conditional triple that you have to build around and bank on it, and she's really awesome. When it works, it's phenomenal. And at one point, it was the best triple in the game. And now awesome. we're at the point where... There's just so much more going on in one year of growth since her. Mm. We have so much. And that's awesome. That's a good sign for the game in terms of like, hey, we're not just standing in place. We're actually adding power. I, I, like I, I don't think it's power creep. But I think it's more of a sidestep. There are things out there now that are just as powerful as her. And that means you don't see as much of her because other things are as good. Uh, Rez is still going to be one of the most fundamentally still, broken mechanics in the game. And that's been around before her. Mm. So we'd go that if we're looking, I still think you mess in the dispossessed doubles. If we're talking about straight ability power, that's fine. She's on a two. What is she? 210 points, 205 points. Two points, five. Um, yeah, two or five, two ten, something like that. She's not the cheapest, not the most expensive. She's got good wounds, toughness, storm cast deal. If a, if she gets caught up in a Vexmore world, she just gets smoked and then yeah. your team falls apart. We have other things, monster killers, better allies, and more aggressive things. And like, like, in a world where she wants to run thick boys up, if you're in an yeah. ogre heavy meta, uh, she they're gonna just get yeah. eaten up. Yeah, so sure. It, Go towards the ogres that you won't kill, and then they'll kill you back. So enabling ranged on her is still really excellent, yeah. and I still think it's a a good spot if that's where you want to be. But I think the more interesting list to talk about here is uh, Callum Townsley. And I love this list. Charles played this up. In Scotland, I love the double blood knight. I think uh, as a meta pick to what we see today, a pair of blood knights, like, oh no, quiet pockets across the field. It doesn't matter because they will catch you and they will kill you. It keeps ranged or any existing range very honest. I like the fact that it's not a big minion resurrect spam list. It's yeah. one spooky boy, two slightly more spooky boys, and then it's yeah. just a bunch of vampires and a white, white king. I think that's unbelievably cool. You know, is it probably the most optimized? No, but it's going to catch that. a lot of people off guard. Mm -hmm. And just moving in, turn one with like a Blood Knight to anchor itself down and be like, okay, move, move, use my triple to give four, five, six damage on something. All of a sudden, something's got like chunk on there. They're just sitting there holding up a line, blocking people and able yeah. to swing back and pick off smaller things. Super awesome. Big fan of this list. I think it's just dripping with flavor. And I think that's like where Warcry excels, right? Like where we can like do well in tournaments with cool lists. We don't have to necessarily abide I mean, by X, Y, Z. A crit yep. six White King is terrifying. Yep. Like, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> toughness White five, King is 25 good. wounds, four attacks. If it crits you, you will die from it. Yeah, absolutely. If you roll sixes, you win. And then they have Beheading Strike too. There's three Resurrect targets yep. here. So you're most likely using your dice. Res is almost always the right answer in missions, sure, but sure. you're most likely using your dice to be like, hey, I can use this double to just, if I throw some sixes, all of a sudden it's two, what is he, two six, then it jumps up to like two eight, two nine. So then it's, you're just exploding things. It's a fun way to play. Not reliable, but super swingy and super fun. And then again, like you have the vampire lord to give AoE attacks, the, like Templars hold things down, the little dudes shamble on up. Yep. Fun yeah, list. I love it. Not this list. It's really cool. Yeah, awesome. So Mark, sixth place, Varagard, Bloodkind. This is Warhammer World. Mark came highly in Warhammer World with this one. Varagard, Bloodkind, Vexmore, Marauders. 
it's, it's all variations on the theme, right? You get Varengard, you get Vexmore, you got Marauders in there, plus but whatever you want. Standard. I like the Blood Kind. Blood, blood, cool. blood Kind's a pet unit, right? Yeah. Like he likes the Blood Kind. It's not terrible by all means. It's a pretty saucy pick. If it's out on turn one, it gets the Brayherd ambush, so it could just fly up a board real fast. Yeah. And then he lets Varengard waddle wherever it wants to go, and the rest of the boys just fill out. It's nothing exciting, but it's the reason why we're seeing Slaves to Darkness so successful because you can put a blood kind in there as long as you have the vex and guard combo to bolster its flanks it's going to be a really good a good time for the player it's pretty straightforward to pilot and it's just looks cool looks good have fun good yeah. job mark eight we have so matthew came third in scotland i actually played matthew on the way up as part of my pass to victory in scotland got lord bruget two ogres with clubs bushwhacker four noblers what actually undid him when I played him is the mission I played him on, Dan's Treasure Mission. I keep, keep forgetting the name. Reclaim Our Relics. Reclaim Our Relics. Yeah, yeah and yeah, there yeah, were a yeah. couple of high pieces of terrain on the board. And I was like, well, I'm just going to go up here. And I'm going to force you right. to climb all the way up here. And then I'm going to jump off. And that's it. I can give treasure to Moblars and go kill Moblars all day long. I didn't kill a single ogre, but you don't need to kill ogres, right? right. As long as you've got something and... that can hold them up, it kind of works. Correct. And ogres, and that's another key piece of, it's important to mention here, right? You said you looked at it as a player that has more experience. You look at your list and his list in a power vacuum, his list wins nine out of 10 times. Sure, it just knocks me over. If he, if he comes and, and smells you, you're dead, right? He just blows the candle out on you and you're done. However, you have to factor one dice, two terrain, three mission. Hey, I got fly. You can't get up to me easy. He's spending doubles on the maw path or might makes right. We know that's what's happening. It's not a surprise. Nobody's like, wow, I didn't see that play coming. I think that's really cool that he's running up the clubs. He's got some numbers still. Was it four, five, seven, eight, nine, nine. models with a gut lord still? It's, big. it's a big war band. Yeah, dude. It's a lot of numbers, but five of those, six of those things. Just, are- guys. Right. right. I had a match in Nova where I went against an awesome opponent from Big Cry and Next Dude's Great. He had a tyrant in a crusher. All I had to do is play keep away and focus the other little dudes. Yeah. And I, I, I kept everybody between terrain, did not make their life easy to get to me, minimum one hit. And then all my dudes had enough wounds to sit there. If you don't kill me on one, you're swinging. So at most, you're going to get like an extra move off a double. Yeah. And it's the same thing with you, right? Just keep away, pick off the targets. It just depends on how you can. Had he had a tyrant or other things, it, it could be a different story because he could throw and whatnot. But oh yeah, he can do that. Uh, His tyrant's got gun. Because uh, we, we were talking about this actually after the game, and he said, "Well, there's no way. I, there's nothing I could have done." And I'm like, "Well, I mean, you if if you take yeah, there's, there's a lot, a lot you could you could, for, in this building, he could have taken the, the, the dude with the harpoon, right? But Ice Hunter, for example, yeah." yeah. Uh, instead or of one of his guys, hunter. blood, hunter blood well. pill, that's the one that would have ruined my day because suddenly he's pulling me off of building towards him. Right. <laughs> oh. He's pulling, he's shooting and he's running five with it. Like it's a yeah. thick model, dude. It's yeah. so yeah. cool. If we're not going to talk list building, cause it's kind of like, well, if I would have had this card in my deck, you look at the mission pack and see right. Warcry has verticality in terrain. Am I going right. to back all my cards in basically saying, right, I'm going to walk up all of this terrain, no matter what's there. Or am I going to forget about it? Is this going to factor into the way that I'm playing? And we talk right. about shooting meta, right? If, if it's there, if it's not there. I still think there's a lot of merit. Even if shooting meta doesn't exist or whatever, there's a lot of merit to having a fighter that can reach out and touch things. But that's why the yeah. Cruciator, I love it so much. That's why I love the Hunter. That's why I love things like Quiet Pop. Hey. You can bring one of them and they work. Having the Cruciator against him is just a huge advantage for you because the treasure's getting snapped onto the Nobblers. They're going to die, run the Nobbler with his big boy. The Mm -hmm. big boy picks it up, uses the double for Might Makes Right. It only gives it plus one, I think, at that point. So he's going to go five with it instead of three. Then he can reach out and run up and engage things and have an easier time getting kills that way, as opposed to just being like, well, my Nobbler dies. Now what? I got to run this guy and chase you around. You're moving six. You're flying. You don't have to climb like he has to he has to play guard. It's disadvantage for him in that situation. Mm-hmm. But it's another thing of like, well, what can we do to minimize this disadvantage? And just run your little dudes with the big dudes. If they don't die from the cruciator, then you're safe and you're next to a big guy. So if you throw your treasure, you throw it in front of the big guy. So if they do pick up the treasure, they're engaged with them or going to be engaged. Mm-hmm. 
if they don't run past it. And he just hunts down from there. And I think that's how you'd have to address that situation. Yeah. Having, still. Had you had the wielder, you would have been slightly not at it, or you would have been not at the advantage that you were in. Yes. Exactly. I think the cruciator, the cruciator was a pretty, a pretty sweet. Yeah. Pretty yeah. sweet inclusion. Next up, Ben, Saviors of Cinder 4 with Eric Questor with Grand Axe. I'd love to see stuff am like I, this. Am I, allowed, am I allowed to drop one curse? Or are we allowed to? Hell fucking yeah, dude. I'm so stoked by this that this is here. I love this box. A lot of people love this box. My boys didn't get a battle trait. Rip. <laughs> Epson <laughs> chat for Order of Azir. Just give them an extra wild die. They need it, right? Yeah. Quiet Pock. You got the quester with Grand Axe instead of a hammer. Who cares? My man's running this. He's playing triples the game and having a good time. I, obviously, this is a Frankenstein event, but he's still 3-1, dude. Still Let's 3-1. go. Exactly. If you can't answer Quiet Pock, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. And he's got the quest to move Pock into where he needs to be, as opposed to Quest having to waste an action to do it, which is great. It's <laughs> super valious at Vexmore's if he has a high triple or a yes. decent triple to be like, the old, okay. The old man, right? Four, five, yeah, three, five. Even a trip three, just minusing three off you and being like, okay, two dice aren't that great with me. And you're not going to sit there and disengage Vexmore. You're just not no. doing that. <laughs> no. You're not going to be like, well, let me disengage and run away. You got to respond to it. Lysa's another titan slash vexmore answer mm. the issue with them is having the triples like you're only getting one triple off a turn right but lisa yes. being hey i'm three inches away from you minus two to your next attack so even if you onslaught with a vexmore you're still going back down the base one mm. and mm. she's 15 health lying on 70 points three inch range she's it's fun. a phenomenal piece and callus is sick if there's any small units like the next list over if he's going mm, against the yeah. blades he can just go shoot shoot and then oh triple shoot again you can't counter him he's four toughness 18 wow. wounds i think or 16 yeah that's wounds, right one of toughness the four 18 wounds four, and then two, he three shooting three times on the triple i want to be fair and heal the correct way slaves of darkness reaction right. instead of the flat three yeah which is i think i think how that should that should be i think that's you know but that's just me i'm so stoked to see that here dude that makes me so so happy. Steve, the man, the legend. Go One ahead. box. Go. Ask again, two blades. Yeah, I played against Steve. <laughs> Charles played against Steve. I beat Steve. Charles lost to Steve. Hell yeah. There was his one loss. I can tell you exactly how it happened. They were playing the mission. One of the kill missions where you get points for models killed. Turn one, as again, exemplar, quad six, rampage into a dog, <laughs> killed the dog. Oh, man. Instant two points out. And that's basically how it went. I like the fact it is one box, right? But there are options you can take within that box, right? The aesthetics, I think you only get one of each weapon, if I remember. But he took both throat takers on his acolytes, which I think is definitely the correct thing to do because they got the range three in there they got a whole bunch of attacks they can kind of stay a range and try and minimize the problems that true blades have one falchion i think it's because you only get two throat takers um in the box so it's about maximizing what you get in that box with a bit of converting you can build a one box with all athletes with throat takers aesthetics with i think the mace is the best one so you both build maces if for anyone out there you true blades lovers um throat takers maces and then whatever else you like. That's 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 where we're sitting. You know better than me on that one. Real, real good job, Steve. I my congratulations on that one. Get the pad those stats, baby. Let's go. Pad the stats, yeah. And then we got two more for you, Leon Smith. So this is Thunderstrike. I like the idea of the light Zephyros. Zephyros is the speedy one, right? It's a Neve light. It's meant to be like her. She's basically Zephyros in the lore for anybody yeah. out there that's listening. Very mediocre shooting profile. Uh, I've got it in front of me. Three, four, one, four. Yep. Shooting 10 inch range. So biggest movement five, toughness five, 28 wins. We're at 200 points. So as yep. a thing, you can put somewhere and just go, okay, I've got plus one strength on my melee it's attacks. Being able to run, hold something down and just have storm ca- access to Stormcast stuff. Yep. Is that Vanguard Chamber? or? I think. What is this? Where are we? Gosh. A uh, Vanguard. Yeah, Gosh. Vanguard. Yeah. It gets half the value of the ability to the attacks characteristic on the next melee attack action, which is good. We're a build your own Neve is pretty much what this yeah. is. Yeah, ba- basically. We got, we, we got Neve at home. Yeah. I uh, also want a double. You can give plus one toughness to all friendly fighters within six. Okay. And on a double, it gets plus three move. So yeah, for three abilities that it can have, they're not bad. 
<laughs> it has plus it has plus three, so it has basically unrivaled velocity on a double. Yes. So it's moving. It's moving. What's it? Move five. So yeah, it does move eight on a double. So we're going sixteen inches across the board. With yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not against somebody like you, right? Against Night Hunt, that's sure. got to be an absolute nightmare. Right? Yeah. If I just and catch you, I've I've got issues. <laughs> right. He's like, hey, I'm sixteen inches now, baby, and you're just like, well, I guess we're just doing this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, we're dancing your way, sir. That's a super cool tech piece. I love that people are digging into the everlasting gobstopper barrel of Stormcast. So what is he got the hammer with the plus one move? Yep. So it's just seven toughness and then two meteor hammers, a vigiler and a griff hound. That's I think just, that's just to make the points fit. And you know what? He's got a surprising amount of movement for a Stormcast mm. list. So put on point, sit. You're just going to use doubles for the hammers, both big and the stubby hammer to yep. just... Hey, if I kill it, I get to move or I get to go. Is that leader only or is that all of them? Just leaders can do that. Woo! Uh, no, he's got an Annihilator Prime anyway. We're good yeah. there. He could do that with them. They all have that and Force of a Falling Star. So on a quad, they take a bonus move. And then when they arrive, if they finish within an inch, it's double the damage mm. of the value. So on a quad six, you just show up and deal 12 damage, which is kind of sweet. Yep. Just big burn damage, baby. Okay. Goodbye. Yep. I love seeing sure. Stormcast. Love it. Yep, and last one. This is what one box. Your one, boys. That is a hey, one box monster killers. This is um, also the yeah, it's a one box. It's the 18th variant of a one box. Two you box. get all the oh. weapons, right? Right, right, right. So he has a baller boy with the stab, but not the flail. He has a harpoon, two bone hackers, two monkeys, the clutch of grot, and the and the beast knob with one crit. So it's three six instead of three five. Yes. They function so well. You can take one box of them, get some uh, some buffs there. You're going to have a battle trait that's relevant for Warhammer World because you can play monsters there. But that's absolutely wild. I love it. It's a very high skill cap team. Yeah. Very fragile when fighting on points. Very awesome and satisfying. And if you want that engagement for when on your opponent's turn for when they move and you can engage and react... It's a headache for your opponent to think I have to end outside of six to move in cleanly. Otherwise, I could get netted or take damage. It's just a phenomenal warband to grow with and get better at. So props to you, Ross. Good job. Keep playing them. You're only going to get better. Yeah, at them. yeah, yeah. Man. All right, that's it from us. That that's all the warbands that went three and one during that event. It was it was one super event that we mashed them together. Thank you very much, Rob, for coming on and, and checking that out with me. My pleasure. Yeah, as always, we do love to talk about the Warbands. We love to check them out, what makes them tick, that kind of thing. So hopefully more events to come in the future. I've got one coming in October. I don't know if there are any more Warhammer World events coming this year. It doesn't look like it. There might be one in December, but if not, there'll definitely be one either January or February. Once again, if you have any thoughts on these Warbands, if you have any coolest ideas of your own, that is definitely something that we would like to hear. Stop down in the comments and be a Rob will happy to have a chat about it again thank you very much rob is there anything you'd like to plunk while we're still here heck yeah man come and check out our channel three heroes one chef i almost said three heroes one cup that would have been a very different channel <laughs> yeah not that uh, channel so three heroes <laughs> one chef if you guys want to learn get some wacky podcast listening get some breakdowns on tournament prep and also know how, learning how to play your best war cry come check us out it's me mike kyle peter promise you it's a good thing to throw on if you're painting hobbying come check us out yep get, get, uh, i'll put the link up there link down there wherever it goes as always i've been itan this has been off Musings. that's been rob yeah have a good one guys yeah and we will see you next time